Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling College Fair. We're so excited to have you participate in today's event. My name is Shauna and I'll be your facilitator for today. We have some fantastic schools here with us and they'll have about six minutes to share more about their institution. But we'll be around for the entire session to answer any of your questions. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of our many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. I'll now turn it over to our first presenter. Thank you. Let me share my screen here. Okay, we can see that, good. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jesse Sims, and I work for Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff, Arizona. My pronouns are he, him, and as you can see here on the screen, I have my contact information if you have any questions after this presentation is over. So for those of you who are not familiar with NAU, we are located in Flagstaff, Arizona, which defies several Arizona stereotypes, uh, being at 7,000 feet above sea level and being one of the sunniest and snowiest cities in the United States. And we have also never reached 100 degrees, which is pretty abnormal for Arizona as well. And we're known for our location. So we're about two hours north of Phoenix. We're really in close proximity to the Grand Canyon, the Red Rocks of Sedona, uh, the San Francisco Peaks. So you do have a lot of outdoor recreation opportunities and there are so many incredible places to explore. And we have a wonderful little community here in Flagstaff that's very open and progressive. As you can see on the screen here, we have uh, Pride in the Pines every Pride Month. So there's always something happening in town and our city has around 80,000 permanent residents. So it's not too small, but not too big. And you'll have most of the amenities that you're used to in your cities where you currently live. Now, at being a lumberjack, that's our mascot. We have several ways to get involved in different campus organizations. So, but on the screen here, you can see that we have around 20,000 uh, students here at NAU. So we are a good medium-sized institution. And there are several uh, different ways to get involved in clubs, whether you're joining you know, outdoor recreation, which is really popular for our students given our location, but also really specific clubs, whether they are LGBTQ specific clubs within different majors at the university or support groups. And uh, NAU is known for its athletic programs, especially in, uh, in the uh, different programs where you're focusing on track and field or cross country, swimming and diving. So there's so much to do here on campus. And when it comes to the inclusivity of our university, we are a Hispanic serving institution, which means more than 25% of our student body identifies as Hispanic or Latinx. And we do have around 47% of, of our students are students of color. Around half of our student body is first generation. And we do have more than 100 tribal nations represented on our campus. So there are several ways to learn about different cultural traditions here on campus and to get involved in clubs and organizations that are focusing on the diversity of our campus by visiting nau.edu slash inclusion and the Office of Inclusion, Multicultural and LGBTQIA Student Services. Now, when it comes to academics, NAU is a relatively large research institution. So we have around 200 academic programs when you're looking at our undergraduate and graduate degrees. And on the screen here, you can see some of our most popular majors at the university, primarily based on the strengths of our location, whether it's environmental sciences, parks and recreation. Uh, if Flagstaff sees around 5 million tourists per year, so we have one of the best uh, hotel and restaurant management programs, not only in the US, but in the world. But other programs are focused on the mission of our institution, which primarily was to be a teacher's college. So education programs are very strong here. And we do have a large and robust engineering college as well. And we have some of the only public health programs offered at a public institution in the state of Arizona. So these are all really important areas for us, but we do have several other degree programs to choose from, whether they're here at our Flagstaff campus or through NAU online. Additionally, we do accept a lot of transfer credits as an institution. So if you want to see how your credits may transfer, whether you are earning dual enrollment credits, credits as a high school student, 
or if you're coming to NAU as a traditional transfer student, we encourage you to visit Jack's Path, which has the website link at the bottom of the page here. All right, so getting into our admission requirements. Here at NAU, we are looking at 14 core courses whenever you apply to the university, and you will self-report those grades on your application. And so we are not looking at your test scores. We don't require letters of recommendation or essays. We're going based only on your unweighted GPA from these 14 core classes. And uh, additionally, we, we do offer uh, admission on a rolling basis, so there's not a specific application deadline, although we do encourage you to accept your offer by May 1st uh, if you want to retain the merit scholarship that you were also automatically considered for whenever you apply to the university. Now, I know some of you may be uh, tuning in from states here in the West. So on the top of your screen, you'll see that we are a member of the Western Undergraduate Exchange, which is automatic for every student coming from those yellow states and territories. And that is an automatic 40% uh, tuition reduction from true out-of-state tuition. So if you do have any questions about our scholarship opportunities, they have a link here on this page, and you can apply by visiting nau.edu slash apply. All right, so there are several ways to stay connected with us. I have some of our social media handles on here. Additionally, we would love for you to visit campus. Flagstaff is a really popular and beautiful place to visit. So there are several ways to come for a campus tour or to do a virtual tour. And we have included some different links on this page for different resources for our students who do identify as LGBTQA+. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me from the first screen, or we do have a specific uh, admissions representative for our LGBTQ plus students, Tyler Siegler, and his, his information is at the bottom of the screen. But thank you for joining us today and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Okay, our next presenter is Princeton University. Thank you so much. Hopefully everyone can hear me now. So I'm gonna put up our slides. Give me one second. You think after two years, we'd be instantaneous at this point on Zoom. But I'll introduce myself. Okay. So it should be up, you should see an overhead view of campus. Thank you, Shauna. So my name is Patrick Gladstone. I'm an associate dean at, uh, at Princeton. Um, I use he, him pronouns uh, to, uh, to kind of kick things off here. Um, I wanna start by saying the, the land on which uh, Princeton stands is part of the ancient homeland and traditional territory of the Lenape people. So we pay respect to Lenape people's past, present, and future and their continuing presence in the homeland and the, uh, throughout the Lenape diaspora. Uh, Princeton was chartered in 1746, making us the fourth oldest college in the United States. Our campus features uh, just about 200 buildings, with a few more coming online uh, this summer on over 600 acres of land. And it is a very pedestrian friendly campus. So everything's very walkable. Uh, here we are right in the heart of New Jersey. Um, so right in, in central New Jersey, uh, we have very much a residential campus community uh, with a vibrant downtown. So the town of Princeton has about uh, 30,000 residents and the university and the Princeton community are, are very closely tied. So while we're in a suburban setting, we're also never far from the amenities of our, our neighboring cities that you can see here. Um, again, we're about equidistant from New York City and Philadelphia. Both are very short train rides. Uh, and we have the Newark Airport that's even closer uh, for students to, to travel home during, during breaks. Now at Princeton, we're focused on undergraduate study first and foremost. We have just over 5,000 undergrads and about 3,000 grad students. And that ratio of undergrads to grad students is unique. Um, and supports the liberal arts mission of the university. Our faculty boasts 12 Nobel Prize winners in addition to field medalists, MacArthur Fellows, Pulitzer Prize winners. Um, these prize winning professors also all teach undergraduate students. 75% um, of our classes have fewer than 20 students. Uh, our undergraduates receive a lot of individual attention from faculty. Um, all faculty members come to Princeton to teach. So here you can see the James S. McDowell Distinguished University Professor of African American Studies, Eddie Glaub Jr., who's leading an undergraduate seminar. This is not uncommon to see even as soon as your first semester as a first year student on campus. Service. 
and civic engagement are very much central uh, to the Princeton experience as reflected in our informal motto here, Princeton in the nation's uh, service and the service of humanity. 60% of our students will have engaged in a volunteer activity by the time that they graduate, either through the Pace Center for Civic Engagement or another student group or campus organization. Uh, for some students, that immersion in service begins before they arrive at Princeton. Um, admitted students have the opportunity to take part in our Novogratz Bridge Year Program, which is a Princeton-sponsored service-oriented gap year that places you in another country with a host family and a support structure as you complete about nine months of a service project. One of the hallmarks of the Princeton experience is living on campus in one of our eight residential colleges, a collection of dorms, dining halls, and advising offices uh, that serve about uh, 200 first year students each. Housing is guaranteed for all four years at Princeton and your residential college is the first community you're gonna be a part of uh, once you enroll. It's also one that you're gonna remain connected to throughout your four years and beyond as, as an alum. 98% uh, of our students live on campus, so it's, it's telling. Um, the students want to, to be in the campus spaces. We have over 300 student organizations, ranging from performing arts to debate, community service, uh, 38 Division I varsity sports teams, club, intramural sports. We have 19 religious chaplaincies and countless ways to stay involved and active in your areas of interest. As a part of the curriculum, uh, Princeton has what's called our distribution requirements that can be thought of as a general education requirement. Uh, there are eight gen ed categories uh, that students have to take to complete their, um, their degree. So some categories are literature and the arts, quantitative analysis. Uh, most recently, we established a new general education requirement in the area of culture and difference. This requirement embeds an appreciation for diverse perspectives within the curriculum, exposing all students, no matter their, their major, to these important topics. Um, we're committed to, to creating a vibrant and diverse student community, and we define diversity in many different ways. When we assemble a class, we're looking for diversity of thought, ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity, socioeconomic diversity, geographic diversity, and diversity of academic interests. Our student body consists of students from all 50 states in more than 100 different countries. 49% um, of our students identify as students of color. 17% are the first in their families to attend college. And when you join the Princeton community, you are entering a lifelong relationship with Princeton. And as this uh, picture here indicates, the color orange. So every year, more than 25,000 Princeton alumni return for reunions, which are coming up in just a few weeks, actually a week and a half at Princeton. Um, it's definitely the most exciting and, and pride-filled weekend of the year. You can see uh, graduates here from the class of 2016 participating in the P-Raid, the Princeton Parade uh, that takes place all throughout campus uh, during the day. Um, students are, are very proud uh, to, to be uh, Princeton alums, and it's largely in part due to the success that students have after they graduate. So within six months of graduation, uh, about 65% of our graduates are employed, 20% are in graduate school, 75% um, of Princeton graduates uh, go on to earn a higher degree at some point in, in their lives. Um, and for those interested in medicine, um, about 84% uh, is our admit rates, um, which is high above the national average. With that, my final slide will just tell you uh, we're one of the first uh, institutions in the country to institute a no loan financial aid policy. We do guarantee to meet 100% of demonstrated need. 61% of our students receive financial aid. Uh, with that, I will pass it off to Shauna. Thanks so much. Thank you. And they are here to answer any of your questions. So feel free to uh, type anything in the Q&A and they will be here to um, answer any of your questions. All right, next up is Rampo College of New Jersey. Oh. Good evening, everyone. Just gonna share my screen here really quick. Uh, um, okay, good. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jose Vallejo. I am uh, an admissions counselor here at Ramapo College of New Jersey. A uh, little bit about our institution. Uh, we are actually one of New Jersey's smallest four-year public colleges. Uh, our total undergraduate enrollment right now is about 5,500 students. Uh, which we are super proud of because our size allows us to really provide students with an amazing campus environment and community. Uh, our average class sizes are about 21 students per class, but more importantly, the largest class size that students are gonna be in 
even in their first year, is only 35. Most classes are capping off at 30 students uh, per class. So we really do provide you that kind of um, small classroom environment with direct contact with faculty members who are here to teach and mentor you throughout your entire time with us. Uh, we are a test optional institution. Uh, so uh, SATs and ACTs are not required for any of our undergraduate majors and, or our four plus one programs. And I'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, but we definitely have, you know, for a small campus, it really does build community. Uh, we are a community where, student, where individuals get to know who you are. Uh, we have a vibrant campus life um, opportunities here on campus for whether you live on campus or you commute. Uh, tons of ways for you to connect with Ramapo through athletics, student leadership, um, Greek organizations, even taking part of our study abroad program. And so we have a ton of different ways for you to make Ramapo your home. Uh, last but not least, I mean, we have tons of visit opportunities as well. Uh, we are about to launch our summer tour uh, campaign. So students will be able to visit campus uh, Monday through Thursday during the summer months. Um, and also we have a lot of opportunity information on our website. Uh, getting into our academics about Ramapo College, we do offer uh, a little over 100 majors and minors uh, here at the, uh, at the college. So we have tons of different ways for students to really kind of tailor their education. Even if, uh, you know, we offer contract majors where students will technically build their major along with uh, an academic advisor to be able to kind of create that very specific uh, educational uh, degree that they're looking to get. Uh, we also have, even in, with our prepackaged, if you will, programs, students can, through electives, can really tailor that education into specific areas. I did mention that we do offer four plus one programs. So these are programs where students can get not only a bachelor's, but a master's degree from Ramapo College uh, in five years full time. So these are listed right here on the screen. Uh, we also do have a number of joint programs in the medical field through our biology major. These are programs where students using the Ramapo application could get admitted not only to Ramapo College, but the partnering medical school for these specific areas of medicine. Um, for those of you that do not, uh, are not interested in any, you know, in these areas, we do offer a pre-med uh, advisement program where students in the biology major will be focusing on completing the science requirements for medical school within the first three years before they can start applying to uh, medical school in the senior year. Uh, so we have a lot of these opportunities. Our goal for our students is not only to give you a great academic education, but also hands-on learning opportunities. Uh, these exist in every class that you will take here at Ramapo College. We also have internship opportunities for all of our majors that are designed to give you the experience that you're looking for. Um, so we really want to give you those opportunities to build a, a strong resume and start building your career. Um, we have 300 employers that visit campus regularly, uh, even during um, the last couple of years with the pandemic and kind of being virtual, we still had employers that were meeting with students regularly um, through Zoom or WebEx calls. Um, we also have internship opportunities uh, in New York City. We have about a thousand of them. We are about maybe 30 miles north of New York City. So definitely these opportunities for internships or even social activities um, in New York City are a big bonus for our students. We also are proud to offer internship opportunities in about 45 countries around the world. So, you know, all of these great opportunities from one of the smallest four-year public colleges in New Jersey. Um, I mentioned before about making Ramapo uh, home. Uh, and we really take that to heart, uh, particularly when we're looking at the opportunities we have for students to grow as leaders on campus. Um, so while we have 300 plus ways to get involved through student clubs and organizations, Greek life, leadership programming, some of the points that I'm pointing out here are very specific to our core mission of uh, being inclusive and a diverse campus and a campus that really celebrates that diversity within not only your student body, but our entire campus community. Uh, so some of these strong uh, student organizations that are really taking the lead to help Ramapo grow and be uh, an inclusive campus include Ramapo Pride, our Black Student Union, ALMA, our international student organization and our uh, college progressive student clubs. But the college also provides opportunities for to, uh, to think about diversity and inclusivity on our campus through specific campus organizations. So these are organizations or, uh, or areas of the campus that really, this is kind of their mission for the uh, on campus, as well as some of our centers. And that includes our Queer Peer Services 
uh, Center, uh, which is part of our Women's Center and LGBTQ Services Programming. Uh, our Diversity Action Committee has is a, a campus committee of not only faculty and staff, but also students. Uh, so we have tons of ways that we really are addressing um, diversity and inclusivity on campus. Admissions wise, our applications open up on August 1st uh, and every application that is received by December 15th is reviewed for possible scholarship opportunities. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to the next poll. All right, thank you so much. Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. Um, and our next presenter is the University of Oregon. Awesome, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Emily Carmichael. I am the Assistant Director for Regional Recruitment with the University of Oregon, and I am actually based right here in New Jersey. So along the way, as you have any questions, sorry, I see the wheel spinning. So I hope you can still hear me as my presentation's loading. Um, but I am happy to help you along the way. So please reach out with anything that you need. There we go. All my contact information is here, but I will share it at the end as well. Um, but here you can see a little bit about our student population. We have just under 20,000 undergraduate students. And if you were to add in our graduate and professional students, it brings us up to about 23,000 students. So we affectionately refer to it as a big, small school. You'll get all of the opportunities of a large research institution while still maintaining a really great small community on campus. And you can walk from one end to the other within 15 minutes. There are fantastic research opportunities for undergraduates, which is one of the things I think is one of our greatest strengths because our graduate population is so small. So the research opportunities are across the board and available to primarily our undergrad students. We do have a really diverse population on campus and it's more diverse than the state of Oregon, which is definitely a big source of pride for us. And it's definitely something that enhances conversations in the classrooms. And here you can see that we are one of the top 20 universities for graduating underrepresented students. We have things like wonderful resources, our Center for Multicultural Academic Excellence, which is a great resource for our students. We also are one of the top 25 LGBTQ friendly institutions. And so to give some examples of some of the resources, our student union, the EMU, hosts an LGBTQA3 Alliance office, as well as offering different support services that, such as we have education and support services for our LGBTQ students. They host wonderful events such as LGBT Tea Time, which I think is so cute. We do also Pride Month, Paint and Sip, we have a pride pool party and there's lavender graduation that takes place each year that honors our LGBTQIA plus graduates. It's definitely a very inviting, welcoming and inclusive campus community. And you really notice that right from the very beginning. We do also have over, we have 168 different academic programs to choose from. So we have a lot of options to select from with strengths really across the board. Our most popular way for our students to start is undecided. About 30% of our students will start out that way. You have until the end of your sophomore year to decide on a program to study and you have access to academic advisors the way that anyone else does. But when you decide on a major, we have lots to choose from. Here you can see all of our different options. We do also have a few unique programs offered that I would love to highlight today. And that's just, we have a queer studies minor. We also have a women, gender and sexuality studies major. So lots of different programs to choose from. And as mentioned, great experiences through research and things like that along the way, no matter what your program is. We do have um, over 300 different clubs and organizations on campus and students can pull up a full listing on our website. If for some reason you can't find what you're looking for, there are always opportunities to start clubs up. But we do have one that I mentioned already, the LGBTQIA Alliance. And we have a queer ally coalition, which works to really create an atmosphere of understanding and acceptance in the community. We also have our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender education and support services, mouthful there, uh, to enhance the academic and personal growth of students and faculty on campus. And we have a club that's our Outlaws, which is LGBTQIA student group that's within the law school. Um, and then we have another one that's called Out in STEM. And so that's educating and fostering leadership in the community um, in STEM fields specifically. So you can see there's a lot of different organizations for students and to support them. We also have um, a variety of different 
multicultural organizations on campus. And that is housed primarily through our Center for Student Involvement. We do have LGBT plus education and support services that offer sexual assault support services. We have um, a Buy and Beyond support group. We have a queer and neurodivergent identity subgroup meeting. And there's so many different opportunities to connect on an intimate level with support groups on campus as well. So just know there's tons of resources for our students to be able to take advantage of on campus. And it's a really supportive um, and welcoming community. Now, we also do require all of our first year students to live on campus. And that's something where students have the opportunity to live on campus after their freshman year if they'd like to. Typically, students move off campus, but just know that if you decide you want to stay on campus after your freshman year, you do get first choice. Uh, we have wonderful different residence halls to choose from, 10 different options. And then we also have academic residential communities, or as we call them, ARCs. So students can choose to live with students in an academic field that they're interested in, or um, with students who are interested in the same things that they are. So we have wonderful different options to choose from. It's not required to live in an ARC, but it's definitely a great way for students to be able to find their niche right away, right when moving onto campus and make our community feel a little bit smaller. So we offer a gender inclusive housing options. Um, and one of those includes the gender equity hall. And that's also home to our LGBTQIA scholars, which is an academic residential community, as I mentioned. This provides a living space that's open for all genders and it fosters respect for LGBTQIA plus identities among residents. And then also these scholars are able to engage with the faculty director and take small seminar courses that really bring the faculty in to discuss their research as well. Well, it sounds like I'm right on time here. Thanks, Shauna. So here is my contact information as well. Um, please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much for your time. And as always, go Ducks. Thank you very much. All right. So you have one last presenter, the University of South Florida. And then after that, we'll do um, a few questions for them. All right. All right. Thank you, Shauna. And welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen in just one moment. All right, hopefully you can see that. So again, my name is Melissa Clark. I'm an admissions advisor at the University of South Florida. And today we're just gonna be talking a little bit more about USF and the application process. So USF is comprised of three different campuses. We have Tampa campus, St. Petersburg and Sarasota Manatee. So we are located in the greater Tampa Bay area. USF is a preeminent research institution and we are fairly large. We have about 50,000 enrolled students and 38,000 being undergraduate. We try to keep our class sizes as small as possible. So we have a student to faculty ratio of 21 to one and our average class sizes are 33 students. We are a diverse and inclusive university with over 40% of our students reporting coming from diverse backgrounds and representing all 50 states and territories in over 140 countries. So for student life, we have over a thousand different student organizations, including the um, Pride Alliance that I would like to highlight. That's just going to be um, something that might interest you as a student. People respecting individual diversity and equality is what it stands for. It started in 1974, and it's the oldest continuously funded gay student organization in the state of Florida. Their mission is to help build the LGBTQ2 um, LGBTQ plus community at USF and the surrounding Tampa Bay area by educating, advocating, and providing a safe space. We also have a ton of different events on campus every year, including concerts, lecture series, celebrity guests, and of course we have games also on our campuses. So most of our game days will be on the Tampa campus. We are an NCAA Division I athletics program. So they are extremely exciting to um, be a part of, or you could go ahead and watch as well. Um, everyone does go to our Tampa campus, except for our football team. They actually play at the Raymond James Stadium, which is where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers also play. And they recently won a Super Bowl. So that's also really fun experience as well. And we also have an excellent counseling center and USF Health Center um, that is inclusive and it's really affirming for any mental health or physical health needs. 
Um, for academics, we have over 200 majors and concentrations. Um, we also offer interdisciplinary research. So we are a tier one research institution, which means that we offer research in every discipline. So if you are interested, it's a great way to start networking with faculty members and build a resume. We also have a great study abroad program. If you are an out of state student, we offer study abroad for an in-state rate. And that could either be for a semester, a summer, or if you would like to go for a couple of weeks, that's up to you. But it is for over 25 different countries. So that is a great opportunity to grow globally in your perspective as well. We have access to local, national, and global internships. Being in a metropolitan area of Tampa, we are um, very invested in the Tampa Bay area, and Tampa Bay area is well invested in USF. So we have a strong alumni base that provides great internship and employment opportunities to our students. So for housing, we have housing on Tampa and St. Pete um, on our campuses. So we have choices between traditional suite style, apartment style, Greek village and living learning communities. Just to highlight one of our LLCs, um, Stonewall Suites is an LGBTQ plus and allied student a living learning community and it's named after Stonewall paying tribute to the Stonewall riots that happened in the 1960s that really kicked off the LGBTQ plus movement. And it is not mandatory for our students to live on campus, so it is optional for you, but if you are interested, it's a great way to get involved and feel connected to the USF community. And hopping into our um, application process. So it is pretty straightforward. Um, USF is unholistic in terms of just looking at your academic profile, so we don't require personal statements, letters of recommendation, and we do not require the writing statement of the standardized test. Just keep in mind, we are not test optional, so we do require your official high school transcript and your official SAT or ACT test score. Uh, we have our application fully online, so either on our website or the common application, and we do require a $30 application fee or an uh, application fee waiver. Um, on the top right, you can see our admitted student profile. This is an average from 2021. Of course, we do accept students above or below this, but for the fall of 2021, most students had a 4.0 to 4.4 GPA, a 1230 to 1370 SAT, and a 26 to 31 ACT. For important dates, um, just to keep in mind, our application will open July 1st, and December 1st is our priority deadline, which is the best chance of acceptance and campus selection. Um, January 1st would be the FAFSA deadline, and January 15th is for scholarships through admissions. February 1st is award spring through financial aid, and May 1st would be the deposit deadline. Just quickly looking over the merit-based scholarships, we do offer generous merit-based scholarships to both our Florida, non-Florida residents as well. So that includes out-of-state and international students. Um, for our out-of-state students, it's going to range between six dollars to $12,000, which is pretty generous and will offset that out-of-state cost. So specifically for out-of-state, um, we have about $35,000 all in, tuition, housing, books, and other expenses. And again, we do offer scholarships, so we do have one of the most affordable tuition rates. All right, that wraps it up for me. Um, I will drop my information in the chat, and here's our QR, QR code as well. Go Bulls! <laughs> Thank you. So if I can bring all my panelists back onto their, put their cameras back on, we'll do a little bit of Q&A. We'll go in the same order that they presented. Um, and hopefully my biggie will get through one, and definitely, definitely one, but maybe two questions. All right. So my first question is what unique campus event or program is specific to the LGBTQ community at your institution? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think this may be a new tradition in our campus, but NAU does border uh, Route 66. So this year they had the Pride Drive-In. So it was like a variety show and drag show that's hosted by our Office of Inclusion. And so it kind of paid homage to the Route 66 Americana vibes, but it also was a great resource fair for our students. That said, they, the aim is to have it outside, but it can snow here up until the end of May. <laughs> so if it's ever snowing, then we will have it indoors. <laughs> I think I'm up next. Uh, yeah, so at Princeton, the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center is, is just that. 
um, it fosters a supportive and inclusive campus community for, for students uh, through collaboration, programming, education, advocacy, and, and mentorship. Uh, there's a number of different student groups that exist uh, through the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, Athlete Ally, Intersection Queer Identities, LGBTQJ, um, an organization dedicated to fostering the LGBTQIA plus Jewish community on campus, Pride Alliance, uh, all these organizations host events throughout the year. Um, the uh, Gender Sexuality Resource Center website is great. It's updated all the time. Um, and you'll see all the different events that take place weekly at Princeton. Um, <clears throat> so for Ramapo, I mean, there are definitely a number of different activities that we have. Uh, I mentioned a couple of them before with our student organizations, but some of the other events that we do include a Pride Fest, uh, Queer Her History a Month uh, opening ceremonies where every October we're launching a number of programs to celebrate Queer History Month. We also do a trans, uh, Transgender Day of Remembrance program on campus and also celebrate Pride Prom and Lavender graduation ceremonies in the spring. Um, so we really kind of, you know, really do a number of different programs for our students, plus all the other uh, student-led organizations also do uh, through their Heritage Months, we'll do at least one program that looks at the intersection between uh, queer identity and that, uh, that organization's focus. So we'll do one uh, on queer identities and Latinx identities. We'll do one uh, you know, with uh, our Black Student Union. So there's a number of different ways that we kind of integrate and celebrate queer identities um, for our campus. All right, and I think I'm next. So um, I know I talked a lot about many different resources we have on campus with our Alliance office on campus and we do a Lavender graduation as well. One of the things I know I didn't mention is that there's a big involvement with the University of Oregon with Pride Fest in Portland as well. So uh, annually with Pride, we definitely get involved in that a lot as well. So I know we were all talking super fast. So there is a lot of things that we already mentioned, but I think just how inclusive USF is and we basically have a hospital on campus. So the medical services that are available to USF students, I think is really unique um, in terms of gender affirming hormone therapy, referral to transgender friendly counseling, um, reproductive counseling, period management, um, preventative screens, um, you know, things like that, that um, are available to the LGBT TQ plus community, um, I think is really great, especially with mental health care as well. Um, and also how supportive we are on campus throughout our organizations, um, events, feeling a sense of community, the considerations for um, LGBTQ plus um, students of color as well. So how diverse our campus is, I think is really unique as well. Great, thank you. And we'll do one last question. What steps is your campus taking to be more inclus inclusive to the LGBTQ community? Yeah, so if, I think we have had gender inclusive housing options for about 10 years, but in the last couple of years, uh, we have had more initiatives to expand that to more campus living communities across the university itself. And uh, we recently started to have uh, mixed gender housing options. So it opens it up to more students who may be allies of the LGBT plus community and also just making it more accessible for our students. Yeah, so at Princeton, I'll say, I think it's, it's most clear in the more recent initiatives that Princeton's taken on. So um, different programs like the peer education uh, program, uh, the Connections program, which is a mentorship program. Uh, and then I'll note one in particular as well. Um, it started in 2017, the summer of 2017. That's the, uh, the LGBTQIA plus oral history project, which was a collaboration between the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center that I mentioned before, uh, the Program in Gender and Sexuality Studies, which is a certificate program at Princeton and uh, the University Archives. And this oral history project um, has students in the summer um, working to uh, interview um, LGBTQIA staff and faculty, alumni, current students, uh, to understand and learn about their lives, particularly their experiences um, being LGBTQIA at Princeton and their perceptions of the climate 
um, for LGBTQIA people at Princeton, different points in time. So I think it's those more recent initiatives uh, that point to Princeton being a place that's that's open to, to growth and continuing to, to educate um, the entire campus community. Uh, so some of the steps that we've been doing here at Ramapo, uh, I mean, we've also had gender inclusive housing on campus for a little over 10 years, I believe. Uh, we've also um, recently, as we've been remodeling our academic buildings, we've also been mindful of including um, gender inclusive restrooms throughout the entire campus. Um, uh, so those are some of the, the concrete ways on campus that we're looking at are not only our students, but our entire uh, community on campus. Uh, but we're also looking at, you know, how we can better help um, the community outside of Ramapo as well. Uh, in the last couple of years, our local municipalities in Mawa and Ramsey have been developing uh, Ramsey Pride and Mawa Pride. So I know that as an institution, we are there to, you know, support these initiatives from our local communities by providing resource information, uh, we have members of our Women and Gender Studies uh, Center, as well as the admissions office, kind of working collaboratively to provide information about the institution, but also what are the resources available for students on campus. Uh, we also are uh, we are the going to be the hosts for um, the NJACAC's uh, Rainbow Key Program. Um, last year, uh, with the pandemic, we did launch this initiative of Rainbow Key as an online platform, but Ramapo will be the host school for the first in-person event. And this will be an opportunity to bring um, LGBTQ students and allies um, and their families to campus uh, for different workshops about the college admissions process, as well as you know how, how does that look for students who identify as LGBTQ? Uh, what are specifics for our trans students that they have to kind of keep in mind when it comes to financial aid and college admissions? So, all of those things we're going to be hosting uh, and that's kind of our way of kind of looking at our institution as you know how do we help uh, this community in particular um, through not only student organizations but also leadership programming on campus and how do we help our surrounding communities as well and Kind of what Jose started with, I would say similar at U of O, I mean, we are really renovating or building some brand new residence halls, facilities on campus. And with that, I mean, we've had gender neutral housing, gender neutral restrooms, but it just continues expanding, which I think is really nice. So it's definitely something that's um, just considered and, and factored into all of our new developments on campus, which is really exciting. Also resources just continue expanding in regards, regards to su support services and and um, different offerings that we have to students on campus. So um, it just further expands because I think we've had it for a long time and then it's just always factoring into continue growing on campus. So I would piggyback off of that in terms of the living learning community that we have for the LGBTQ plus and allied students. Um, like I said, it was Stonewall Suites, um, but we also are more inclusive in terms of how your name is reflected. So we really take pride in making sure that your identity is really up to you. So we do a preferred name policy where how your name is displayed is your choice on the IDs, rosters, et cetera, and our multicultural affairs um, department at USF, we also have, it's called a safe zone. It's a four part educational program that's open to students, staff and faculty and the public. So it's a four part program that basically um, promotes understanding, support, inclusivity, and starts those conversations and activities. So I think those are ways that we're really moving forward as well. Great, I wanna thank you guys so much. Uh, for those wonderful answers. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, when you do close this window today, there will be a link to a very quick five minute, five question survey. We, we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We do encourage you to check back uh, the schedule and sign up for more sessions. We do have sessions scheduled for tomorrow and you will be able to find these, this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. Thank you all for coming. Have a great night.